everybody. This is going to be how to do a nuclear stress test, the whole entire procedure, but specifically processing. Okay, so first we need IV access. That way we can give the injection, Technetium 99M Sestamibi. After that, we wait about 45 minutes before we can take our pictures. I hook them up to a three lead EKG and take specced pictures for about 10 minutes. Once that's done, it's time for the stress portion of the test. Here, we hook the patient up to EKG leads and a blood pressure cuff so that we can monitor their heart very closely as we stress them. There are two different ways we can perform the stress test. The patient can exercise by walking on the treadmill and they walk until they reach their target heart rate. A lot of patients aren't capable of that, so what we can do instead is give a medication. LexiScan is what we use and it'll artificially stress their heart. Either form, they both get an injection again of Technetium 99M Sestamibi. We wait 45 minutes again and then take the last set of images. All right, are you watching? Okay, so uh, the way that the camera takes an image of the heart is it rotates around the heart using two detector heads, it's kind of like a TP motion. It rotates around the patient, which is called SPECT imaging. Um, and this is what we're left with. This is the raw data. And this is our little ROI that's focusing only on the heart. And more specifically, this test is looking at the left ventricle of the heart. Here, I'm just centering my ROI. That way I'm including everything that's heart and trying to exclude anything that's not heart. So believe it or not, but your bowel, your gut, your large intestine, comes up pretty close to your heart. And so sometimes patients have a lot of gut activity and it's a hard time trying to chop it out of the picture so that it doesn't mess up your heart images. These are specific slices of the heart. So you got your horizontal slices over here and your vertical slices over here. And this is just a sample of what the doctors will be able to view. The way that the images are taken, there are several slices in order, you know, going through the heart so that we can chop it up in sections. That way the doctor is able to evaluate each little section of the heart. The purpose of this test is to take a look at the blood flow to the heart muscle, okay? So this first set of images here, this is the stress images. That's the second set of images we take from the patient after the stress test. Down here, you notice how they look a little bit grainy, more grainy than this. These are nice, bright, and clear. These are your resting images. And the reason that they look a little bit more grainy is because your rest injection of the uh, Technetium 99M Sesamibi, which is what we use here, your resting dose is actually significantly lower than the dose of radiation that you inject for your stress images. The higher the dose, the clearer the image because the camera is able to accept more counts of radiation. We need it to also overglow the resting images. So you try and make this as low as possible with the image still turning out pretty well, you can see right here. But then you want your stress image images and dose to be about twice the amount of what your resting was. So what I'm doing here is I am trying to get these slices to match up as close as possible. That way it's easy for the doctors to compare. And for the sake of this being a video, I'm not going to play too, with it too much. <laughs> I, I, you can sit here for 20 minutes trying to make it absolutely perfect, but let's speed on through this. So we saved what we processed there. So now we're gonna go over here at, to our applications and we need to open it up in the QGS QPS. Okay, so this is how it pulls up. So this is the quantitative gated spect so these are all of your gated images. We're able to view how the heart is pumping. 
So here I, I kind of turn on my contours just to make sure they're not picking up anything crazy. Like I was mentioning, if there's some bowel activity, sometimes it is collecting data from the bowel that is not heart data and it can skew your results on this side here. So these look pretty good. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. The computer normally does a really good job with finding contours. So I don't want to mess with it too much. It does all the math and calculations, which are much more accurate than the human eye. So if it looks about right, leave it alone. So this is where I'm going to make all of my snapshots. And here we kind of just go here. I would name this QGS and we're under the tab slice. So that's what I would name it, save. Um, I'm not gonna take screenshots of each page, but I will run through each page just to show you. So now this is our surface page. This is what the heart looks like at each phase of pumping. This is our splash page. Again, these are all still gated. They're moving images. Here's another page. Use just more of the pumping heart. I take a picture of literally every page just to give the doctors as much information as they, they'd like. All right, and now this is my results series page. Okay, so from here, we're gonna move on to the next review menu tab, the next processing tab, which is the quantitative perfusion spec. So this tab, we're going to be able to evaluate the blood flow. So here, these are your stress images, your stress slices. Here is your rest images, your rest slices, or the first set of images that we took. Here, this is called a bullseye view of the heart, okay? So that is if you take the heart upside down like that and then squish it down flat. That's what this view is. So what it's saying is that here, 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 and right here in your stress set of images, which you can also see on this, this image here, it's saying that those are perfusion defects or filling defects or areas where the radiation was much lower in the stress images than it was in the rest. You see that in the resting images, that doesn't exist, okay? We've got this right here, but this kind of fills in with the stress, so that that's most likely just artifact. But this, it is strange the way that it's shaped, but let's not worry about the shape. Let's just think about the idea. If there's something that shows up in the stress images that was not there in the rest, that is what they're looking for. That is what could possibly be um, a blockage in one of the coronary arteries. We're looking for a mismatch defect. Say that the resting images looked exactly like the stress, then that means that there's damage to that heart. That's a scar and that there is no way that there's gonna be any blood flow right there, just period. They may have had a heart attack in the past or whatever it may be, but it's damaged heart muscle and it's not getting blood flow in the resting phase or in the stress phase. But this one, since it's only in the stress phase, that's a little bit, again, the shape is a little bit weird. The shape is probably because, you know, the processing could be done a little bit better. But I just wanna give you the watered down version. So say this is a true defect. If it's in the stress images, not rest images, then it's concerning for a blockage in a coronary vessel. It's showing here on this bullseye view that this is reversibility percentage, which could possibly be fixed with like a stent. They could restore store blood flow to these areas of the heart should they open up the blood vessel that feeds this area of the heart blood that could possibly be blocked. This is your results page. I'd screenshot this and now I'm going to keep going through all of my pages. Same view, screenshot, surface. This is showing the surface. Screenshot, splash, this is my splash. And notice these aren't gated because all of the gated moving images are under this tab here. Views, same thing, we're looking at the blood flow. Now moving on to the next processing phase, myometrics. Okay, so this is a very important page. Here it's showing you the raw data, which is useful in showing, you know, did the patient hold still? It looks like there's really not that much motion. 
Um, these are good raw images. That was a good study. The patient did well. So at the top, these are your stress slices, and this is your rest, okay? Still starting at the very bottom of the heart, starting at the apex of the heart. These are slices going through, okay? So what doctors do is compare each slice like this and see if there's any defect they notice. So these are rest, these are your stress. Same thing, just a different view. And you wanna make sure that you line these up correctly for the physicians, okay? You don't want it, let me show you what I mean. You don't want it way out of order like this because then it's not easy anymore to compare them. You want the same type of slices right underneath each other. That way doctors can really not have to put any effort in manipulating that because that's your job. Okay, so here is where I would annotate, okay, using this little pencil mark. There are a couple of things that you have got to write on your study. For my rest, I will put the dosage that I gave my patient. So let's say it was 11.25 millicuries of technetium 99M maybe. Then for stress, we gave 35.2 millicuries technetium 99M maybe. Okay. Now, how did we perform the stress test? Like I showed you the options earlier. Did the patient walk on the treadmill slash run? <laughs> or did we give this patient LexiScan? Let's say this patient was given LexiScan. Here in my patient demographic, that is the popular choice. Only thing I'm missing now are my initials. Bah. So I'd screenshot this and then I'm going back to these pages. So this page is important because of this number right up here, the TID, trans ischemic dilation ratio. This page is very useful, I, I feel. So this is just another way for the doctors to view all of your measurements and your images all on the same page. So I always screenshot this too. And guess what? We are done. So how was that? Was that fun? <laughs> I actually enjoy processing. Um, the cardiacs are probably one of the studies that involve a, a couple more steps than usual, but I, I love that part of my job, manipulating data. And I just love the feeling of really understanding why you are doing certain things. It just makes you feel important and it makes me feel powerful that I'm actually doing something that matters, um, which is very important for me, fulfilling for me. This test is very important because it can save lives. It can find a blockage in a patient's coronary vessel before it's caused any permanent damage. Uh, if you're starting to feel symptoms or if your patient is saying they're having chest pain, shortness of breath on exertion, um, things like that, or like especially in women feeling pain down their arm with that chest pain, those are the types of signs and symptoms that point doctors to take a look at your heart. And this test just gives so much information. It's a very valuable test to have. Thank you so much for you guys watching and sticking through to the end. If you made it all the way to this point, you're amazing. Thank you.